Welcome to Data Slant. I'm Dan. I'm Nathan. And we're going to be exploring Python and data in all sorts of ways. We're really excited today because we're starting a new project and a new series of videos where we're, we're going to be stringing together a bunch of Python tools to accomplish some cool stuff. What we're going to be doing is actually scraping Craigslist for prices of some phones or some cars or something that's found throughout the U.S., and then plot that average price over the U.S. map on where most expensive places are to buy, say, an iPhone, and where the cheapest places are to buy an iPhone off of Craigslist. So let's get started. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. This is not a project we've done before, so we're sort of going to be learning together. Um, we're going to do this in a Jupyter Notebook. I've got um, a terminal open here, so I'll just uh, type in... Jupyter Notebook, and that'll start one um, an instance of that up. I'm going to just make a, <clears throat> a new notebook. Um, the first library that we're really going to be diving into is the Requests library in Python. Um, it is a library for making HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol, uh, requests across the internet. There's quite a few other packages that you could also use, um, but we just feel like requests is nice and clean and pretty simple to just jump in and start using. So that's what we're going to show you right here. To start off, we're going to have to do an import requests, and then we're going to have to, of course, find the website that we're going to scrape. Um, to start off with, we don't know what every single Craigslist website is because each city is based off its own website. So we're going to scrape one website, which is geo.craigslist.org slash ISO slash US, which lists all the US based Craigslist sites. Um, so yeah, you, we've got that site pulled up right now and you can see that it's just got a list of everything. Everything from, you know, the little towns to the big ones. Um, and so the way the requests library works is it takes a, a string, a URL string, um, as, as, a, as, in, as an input. Um, and so we're just going to take that URL that we were just at there, um, and we'll make that a string, and we'll call that uh, Store a, um, a URL. URL. <clears throat> and now we could just pass this right on into the requests, but... Instead of that, we're going to add a little bit more options to it. Um, we're going to add a little bit of a header, which is going to specify what our user agent is. Our user agent is what browser and what operating system we're using this. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to actually pretend that we're an iPhone just to get the mobile view of the website. So They're usually just a little cleaner, especially when we just want a couple of links. Yeah, That's so requ you can do a lot of cool stuff with the, this this headers um, dictionary. It's a dictionary that gets fed into the the uh, the request. Um, like Nathan was saying, one thing you can do is the user agent thing. I've got this little uh, extension to Firefox where I can switch my user user agent to anything I want, and um, and 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 the the page that's it'll the sites that I'm visiting will think I'm coming from that, and what I get back from the site will will be determined partly by that user agent. Um, and so I can just, uh, here we're just going to pretend to be an iPhone just for the fun of it. Um, and just go ahead and paste that in there. <clears throat> so we'll put that headers. So now we have the URL and the headers. So now we need to actually make the request. Um, we're going <laughs> to save the response as a variable called response. And just do request.get because we only really need to do a basic get request. This will give us basically the HTML content of the whole page as well as some other data like um, the request header, the response header, as well as some other data. But we'll show a little bit of that coming up here. Yeah, so you can, like Nathan was alluding to there, there's other types of methods that you can use with the request library. For instance, post, um, you can um, do a head to just get headers back. You can do options. Um, the other thing that's interesting you can do and feed into this um, to your parameters is an auth. 
Um, and so if you have to pass a username and password or something like that to get, get to a website, you can do that here. Um, and that also takes a dictionary as an argument. So we'll go ahead and make that request here. Oh, I'm sorry, typo. So <coughs> requests.get. So you can see that that completed. So let's take a look at uh, just make sure everything was okay. So we'll, um, this will complete even if it doesn't find that URL. So if we do an actual status code, it'll give us, what do you know, a 200. That's a A-OK. -okay. That's a good, an OK. Um, other ones like 500 are bad. I believe a 500 is a unknown. Basically yeah. what you're looking for is that 200, 200. there. And you're good to go on to your next steps. You, if you really want to dive into it, you can even check other things like the header of the response. Um, and for us, we don't really necessarily care about this data right now because all we care about is the actual details of the website, not necessarily the header and everything. But as your web scraping gets more advanced, this is some of the stuff you might need to worry about and think about as you're making, uh, exactly. as you're scraping stuff. Um, so from here, we can just go response dot content, and that will show us all the content of the whole website response. Um, and as you can see, let's scroll down some middle part here. Um, if you look carefully, East Oregon is right there with the link just being to the left of it, eastoregon.craigslist.org. And that's what we're going to be pulling out. But rather than doing this brute force method like this, we're going to actually pass this into beautiful soup coming up on our next video, which will basically make this whole section super easy. Thanks. Join us next time. Thanks. Um, yeah, sure hit subscribe. <laughs>